isang makakalikasang araw mga mag-aral. I am Mr. Lorenzo Dungo and I will discuss about the Republic Act 11038 or the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System. For this lesson, the following are our learning objectives. First, explain RA 11038 or the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System Act. Second, cite an effect of illegal activity done in protected areas to the wildlife and the violator. And third, create a razor hand statement for the protection of Philippine wildlife and biodiversity. Now, the Philippines is a biodiversity-rich country blessed with abundant natural resources, continue to face the negative impacts caused by humans and our activities. Hence, the enactment of RA11038 highlights the addition of 94 protected areas in the Philippines, which is a step forward in conserving and protecting these places and the very species that depend on the ecosystems that exist within these protected areas. Now, according to RA11038, it is the policy of the state to secure for the Filipino people of present for future generations the perpetual existence of all native plants and animals through the establishment of a comprehensive system of integrated protected areas within the classification of national park as provided for in the Constitution. And as mentioned in RA11038, the National Integrated Protected Area System is hereby placed under control and administration of the DENR or the Department of Environment and Natural Resources and its Biodiversity Management Bureau. But for a more direct management and supervision over a specific protected area, the Biodiversity Management Bureau has the authority to appoint a protected area superintendent or PASU, which shall be primarily accountable to the DENR for the management and operations of the protected area. The protected area superintendent is also part of the protected area management board along with different officials such as the local government unit and other government agencies involved. And now to familiarize more about terms that are used in the law, let us mention some and know their meaning or definition. First, biological diversity or biodiversity. This refers to the variability among the living organisms from all sources, including inter alia, terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems and ecological complexes of which they are part. This includes diversity within species, between species, and of ecosystems. Next, we have ecosystem goods and services. It refers to the multitude of material and non-material provisions and benefits from healthy ecosystems, which is necessary for human sustenance, well-being, and survival, including support processes, provisioning, and environment regulating services, and also cultural resource preservation services. The next one is exploration. Exploration refers to the act of searching or prospecting for mineral resources such as geological, geochemical, or geophysical service, remote sensing, trenching, drilling, tunneling, and the like. Next, we have hunting. It refers to the killing or catching of wild fauna for food and recreational purposes with the use of weapons such as guns, bow and arrow, spears, traps and snares. Next, we have kaingin. Kaingin refers to the slash and burn cultivation of vegetated land in a protected area, whether occupied or not, shifting and permanent with little or no provision to prevent soil erosion. The next term is National Park. It refers to the lands of the public domain classified as such in the 1987 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines, which include all areas under the National Integrated Protected Area System, 
pursuant to this law. And it is primarily designated for the conservation of native plants and animals, their associated habitats, and of course, cultural diversity. The next one, we have natural park. It refers to a relatively large area not materially altered by human activity, where extractive resources uses not allowed and is maintained to protect outstanding natural and scenic areas of national or international significance or for scientific, educational, recreational use. Next, we have NIPAS or the National Integrated Protected Area System, which refers to the classification and administration of all designated protected areas to maintain essential ecological processes and life support systems to preserve genetic diversity, to ensure sustainable use of resources found therein, and to maintain their natural conditions to the greatest extent possible. Next, protected species. So the protected species refers to plants or animals declared protected under Philippine laws rules and regulations. More often, these are the species that are threatened. Either they are endangered, critically endangered, and the like. The next term would be wildlife sanctuary. Wildlife sanctuary refers to an area which assures the natural conditions necessary to protect nationally significant species, group of species, biotic communities or physical features of the environment, which may require specific human manipulations for their perpetuation or longevity. After discussing the terms, um, now we will have some examples of protected areas in the Philippines. With the essence of this topic, let us know these places in the Philippines that are considered protected areas under the law. And as we discussed in the terms of the law, protected areas refer to the identified portions of land or water set aside by reason of their unique physical and biological diversity and protected against destructive human exploitation. The first one we have here, the Ninoy Aquino Parks and Wildlife Center or the NAPWC, which is located in Diliman, Quezon, Z Quezon City. The NAPWC is a place that connects people to biodiversity. It is a venue for recreational, civic, religious, and educational activities on biodiversity conservation. With this, the NAPWC is also one of the country's national park. Also, the NAPWC is the place we featured in our e-biodiversity tour, which you have navigated and got to know the species within the place. The next protected area we have is the Las Piñas Paranaque Critical Habitat and Ecotourism Area or the El Pipecheya, which is also known as the Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park. It is a protected area at the coasts of the cities of Las Piñas and Paranaque in Metro Manila, Philippines. Also, it is a declared Ramsar site under the Ramsar Convention of UNESCO. The third example is the Upper Marikina River Basin Protected Landscape. It is a protected area in Rizal, which plays an important role in regulating water flow towards the National Capital Region. Next, this example is a famous place known to almost all of us, the Taal Volcano Protected Landscape, which covers an area of more than 62,000 hectares and it surrounds the Taal Volcano Island and, of course, the very famous Taal Lake. Aside from being a tourist spot, it is also provider for many essential ecosystem services that are crucial to our present and future well-being. Local communities obtain food, fresh water, fuel, wood, and other basic necessities from the Taal Volcano protected landscape. The next one we have the Chocolate Hills Natural Monument. 
which is also a very famous or known tourist attraction in our country. This is found in the province of Bohol in the Philippines. Additionally, the Philippine tarsier, which is an endemic species to the Philippines, is also found in the province of Bohol. Now, let us talk about some of the illegal acts and the specific penalties and fines that the law provides for such. Here are some of the following acts or actions that are prohibited within protected areas. First, poaching, killing, destroying, disturbing of any wildlife within the protected area. Second, hunting, taking, collecting, or possessing of any wildlife or the per or their derived by products within the protected areas without necessary permit from the DENR. Next, cutting, gathering, removing, or collecting timber within the protected area. Next, we have the possessing or transporting outside the protected area any timber, forest products, wildlife that have been taken from the protected area. Next, using any fishing or harvesting gear and practices that destroys coral reefs, seagrass beds, and other marine life. Also, we have dumping, throwing, using or causing to be dumped in two or places in the protected area of any toxic chemicals. Next, altering, removing, destroying, or defacing boundary marks or signs, and engaging in kaingin or any manner causing forest fires inside the protected areas. So now, what fines and penalties can the violators face? Well, according to the law, prohibited acts done by violators can be sanctioned with fines and penalties depending on the gravity and the scope of their damage. For example, there is a fine of not less than 200,000 pesos but not more than 1 million pesos or imprisonment from one year but not more than six years or both of this for the violations such as poaching, killing, hunting, cutting timber, and the like. Another example of the fine and penalties include a fine of not less than 200,000 pesos but not more than 1 million pesos or imprisonment from one year but not more than six years or both of this for violations such as kaingin, removing of boundary signs, littering debris on ground or in bodies of water, and so on. And now that we have discussed about the prohibited acts and what can a person face when they violate RA11038 or the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System, let us cite some examples of what can youth do. The first action we can do is to leave no trace when we travel anywhere, whether it be a protected area or just in our streets in the city. And there is a saying that tells, take only but pictures and leave nothing but footprints and memories. After all, we go to places to visit and enjoy and not to destroy. Second, it is to support local. While we want to travel more and explore the world, this is actually a helpful way not only to enjoy for ourselves, but also to help the local economy and the people whose living depend on it. So, love local and support local. The next one would be to help in the fight against pollution, which has many forms such as water pollution, air pollution, land pollution, and more. Let us keep our environment clean and green by not adding up to the problem of pollution. Let us be responsible of our waste as we can also participate in cleanup drives in our communities and even the simplest activity or act of segregating our waste in our houses. Next, educate oneself and the others. By doing this, we believe that education is a powerful tool to spread awareness knowledge, and spark action from ourselves and the people around us. Together, we can help protect our environment, 
through educating ourselves and applying it in our daily lives. The next and the last example of what we can do as a youth is to participate in restoration efforts. When we say restoration or restore as its root word, we intend to reverse and bring back what has been lost. And in context of nature, we must restore nature so that the future generation will enjoy what we all enjoy now. We call upon everyone to join the United Nations Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, which will run for this decade, starting 2021 up to 2030. This ends our recorded discussion. I hope you enjoyed learning. Let us continue learning and taking action for nature, our environment, and the web of biodiversity. Stay safe and thank you, student.